The Dream Chaser, developed by the Sierra Nevada Corporation, it's the latest space shuttle to win a NASA contract to deliver International Space Station cargo. And as Christina Quinn shows us, much of the magic is happening right in our own backyard, right over there in Kendall Square. When it first takes off, the Dream Chaser acts like a space shuttle, looks like a space shuttle, and is boosted into space in a rocket. Very standard space shuttle moves. That's where the similarities end. Because once it's in space, software takes over. Software developed at the Draper Laboratory in Kendall Square. The technology we've put in there uh, can guide the vehicle through its entire uh, mission. Seamus Chewy heads the team that developed the smarts of the Dream Chaser. And after we deliver the cargo, uh, we then control the vehicle on its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and subsequent landing on a runway uh, at Kennedy Space Center. That's the kicker. Unlike the SpaceX Dragon, a capsule that currently delivers cargo to the International Space Station and returns by landing in the ocean, the Dream Chaser starts acting like an ordinary plane once it's back in the Earth's atmosphere. It lands like an aircraft. Uh, it can land on a runway uh, that any commercial aircraft can land on. So it, the operations uh, that we're trying to get to is, is uh, basically like an aircraft-like operation. And that matters because timing is crucial when bringing back valuable science experiments from the ISS. And because the Dream Chaser doesn't use a lot of propulsion and fuel in its return, it's not toxic to humans, which means right after landing, everything can be immediately put into the lab. All of this is because of sophisticated aerospace engineering. But can a computer really land a plane that much better than a human? Yes, according to Alan Campbell, the head engineer of this software. But who better to challenge a machine than this reporter? We have three monitors. This just shows what the pilot would see if they were sitting there looking out of the vehicle. Okay. Alan kindly walks me through the simulation of the manned landing version, complete with a video game joystick and foot pedal brakes. Even though it's a simulation, the view of the Armstrong Air Force Base from 12,500 feet above still looks daunting. Are you ready to give it a shot? I guess so. Let's do it. What you're just going to do is you're going to take that green circle and move it toward the red diamond. Okay. It sounds so simple, Alan, and yet I sense that I'm going to fail miserably. Okay. Be confident. Three, two, one, go. So the secret to all of this is a soft touch. Okay. Now, doesn't that look a little scary? Yeah. <laughs> We're going off target. No. No. Uh oh. Pull, 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 pull. Oh no! Oh god, <laughs> this is not ending well at all. Should I? I should have hit the brake sooner, right? You, it wouldn't have really done anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but <laughs> I've only ever seen one person successfully land this fully manual. And who was that? It was me. <laughs> but to be fair, I've tried thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> Christina Quinn joins me, and I was going to ask you for a ride to my car. I'll walk. It's okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so well, you mentioned something that was interesting. Well, a lot of things were interesting there. The, the, the cargo gets to the lab quicker. Yes. How much quicker? When if something lands in the ocean, how long does it take? And if something lands on a runway like that, yeah. how long does it take? Sure. So the Dream Chaser, the plan is that it's going to land, from leave the ISS um, and land, um, you know, at on an on a commercial um, runway within three to six hours. So that's a huge difference because right now the... Why? Because Who you, cares if the stuff's be, three hours old or 24 hours old? Because it matters. They're, they're science experiments, valuable science experiments. And as things the age, fresher, the yeah, better. the fresher the better. So is, can they land, when you say on a commercial runway, yeah. the implication I draw is they could land on any commercial yes. runway? Yes, any, any commercial, commercial runway. runway. So if you think about so that, it's like right? An air, regular, it's yeah. like an airplane. Yes, exactly. So that opens up so many opportunities for laboratories and you know, all around the world. Think about that, you know? Uh, I am thinking about that. So when, when do they do this first cargo thing with this? When's that happen? It's slated for 2019, yeah. And is there a piloted version of this as yeah. well? So they're working on, they're gonna work on that next. So first they're gonna complete the cargo version, the cargo Dream Chaser version, and then move on to the piloted version. And, and while well, the landing and the reusability is a great thing, both for fiscal reasons and others, doesn't the space shuttle already do this? Well, they they did before it you know before before it ended. But the space shuttle, so they modeled the Dream Chaser um, after the space shuttle. So that's why you know, it lands like a plane. But the different, the biggest, one of the biggest distinctions here is the high reusability factor, and it's also much smaller. It's quite cute. You did a great job, almost as good as I did on that smell test with you a couple of months ago, <laughs> Christina. Thanks so thanks, much, Jim. Christina Quinn.